We are back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're gonna be reacting to ESPN's mock draft um, as soon as the draft lottery ended. So this was published about like less than a week ago, but you know, it's pretty much the same uh, as far as a lot of these top picks. So we're gonna be going through the first round. Um, the second round kind of gets, you know, a little bit of, uh, it's, it's, it's not really um, that solidified with some prospects in the second round. So we're just gonna keep it light with the first round for now. Uh, but I might look at the second round in future mock draft videos. Uh, let me know if you guys want me to like give you guys a preview or like a um, a, uh, a review of each player, um, like each of the top prospects. Like I can do a video for Chet, Paolo, Jabari, like their best fits, worst fits. If you guys are interested in that content, because I'm thinking about doing that. So, uh, but I don't know who's interested in that type of content. So let me know if you guys are interested in that type of content. Uh, but yeah, shout out to ESPN. They're, they're very credible, which is why I used ESPN. Um, Jonathan... Uh, I don't know how, he, how, how to pronounce his last name, Givoni. Yes, something like that. He he made this mock draft, and he's also had some. He's very close with the draft. He he has a lot of insiders and stuff like that. But um, without further ado, I'm, I'm gonna try to make sure I don't spoil as many picks. Uh, the Orlando Magic are selecting Jabari Smith in his mock draft. I'll give you like a quick version of what I would do if I was each team. Like I said, I did a mock draft earlier um, last week, but a lot some stuff has changed since then for me. So. Um, I will fill you in on what has changed, but leave a like, subscribe, comment down below. So Jabari Smith, number one to the Orlando Magic. Um, I've seen a lot of Jabaris and Chets to the Magic. And, and on all the mock drafts that I've seen, I've seen a lot of Jabaris. I've seen a lot of Chets. Um, and I can see why. You know, there was a report that came out today. I'm pretty sure this it was from uh, Jonathan Givoni that said that Jabari Smith um, or the teams think that the Orlando Magic are targeting Jabari Smith with the number one pick. Um, but there was also a report from The Athletic that said that uh, the Magic are gonna probably going to pick Chet Holmgren with number one. So um, two you know, different reports there. Um, Jabari Smith is a terrific player. He's uh, one of my favorite players in the draft, and he's a player that I'm very close to um, as far as you know, uh, why he's one of my favorites is because I, I was a fan of his even before he committed to Auburn. So I've been with this guy for a while now, which is why I'm pretty close to him um, as far as you know my liking for his game and stuff like that. But I would actually go with Paolo Bancaro if I was the Magic. Um, like I said, you can't go wrong with either of the three because those are the top three for a reason. But the reason I would go with Paolo Bancaro is that when I look at the Magic r roster and like their young talent with Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner, Cole Anthony, Mo Bamba, Jonathan Isaac, Chumo Kiki, RJ Hampton, etc. I could go on and on because the Magic have a lot of young talent. They don't really have a number one, a true number one option in my opinion. And I do think that... Um, Paolo Bancaro is probably the best number one guy in this draft when you look at a scoring option. Um, and that's what the Magic lack, in my opinion. So I think they have to go get their solidified scorer. And I do think that Paolo Bancaro can come into the NBA averaging 18 to 20 points a game because that's how talented of an offensive player that he is. He reminds me a lot of Michael Beasley at Kansas State um, with his, you know, offensive game. But a lot of people probably won't know that because they didn't watch Michael Beasley at Kansas State. But if you did, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, except Michael Beasley was obviously left-handed, but Paolo is a bona fide scorer, but Jabari would not be bad either. Defensively, he's a lot better than Paolo, which is why people aren't, aren't as high on Paolo, but I do think that Paolo is the only true number one option in this draft class. Um, which is why I think the Orlando Magic should go with him. But Jabari, I would, I would hundred percent, um, not be bad if you went Jabari here. You can't go wrong with either three. Like I said, Chet at two interesting you know i would i would probably you know go paolo one and then probably go jabari two but i would not be mad at chet at all the reason i would go jabari is because of floor spacing purposes for the uh oklahoma city thunder next to shay and stuff and, and shay and giddy and stuff like that but um chet holmgren like it says right here argu arguably one of the uh, pro arguably the most talented prospect available um you know defensively he can protect the rim he's very long and athletic um, and a lot of people have him going number one to the Magic because of you know their their front office's draft history and how they value lengthy players. Um, but Chet at two is not a bad pick for the Thunder. I'm, I'm presuming they have Paolo at three, and they do. So Paolo at three, um, that offense is ridiculous. If Paolo falls to three, the like, like I said in the mock draft video, the Rockets, their job is very easy. You kind of just take whoever is not taken, um, and don't go with the curveball by taking a guard like Ivy or Shaden Sharp or, e or like a Keegan Murray. Just keep it simple and take whoever is available at three from the top three prospects. I've so I've seen a report said that said that the Rockets are open to th trading the third overall pick sure i guess but i don't think they should try to do anything you know too risky just go with the safe pick like either paolo 
Chet or um, Jabari, whoever falls. I would like Chet with their team the best because I think they have scoring options like Green and Josh Christopher and Kevin Porter Jr. already. But if you go with Paolo, that, that scoring just even gets, you know, like that, that scoring just gets increased by a whole lot of a whole lot because you got Jalen Green who I think is the best scorer in the draft from last year and then you got Paolo who's the best scorer in the draft in my opinion this year so offense is ridiculous with Paolo in Houston the Kings okay so he actually has them selecting Keegan Murray um this is interesting because I've seen mock drafts a lot of mock drafts had Sacramento selecting Jaden Ivey um and I expressed as to why I was not a fan of the Ivey fit in Sacramento because I don't think he can play well um off the ball with De'Aaron and I do think that, you know, there, there's going to be some issues there as to who's going to be, you know, who's going to have the ball in their hands. Um, also, both of those guys are terrific going downhill. Like I said, the spacing issues are imminent. Um, I wouldn't like Ivy with Sacramento. Uh, so I'm glad that uh, ESPN did not go there. Keegan Murray is, 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 is a good player. And I do think he would fit in Sacramento. But I just don't think that's he's the best player available. I, I'm not a Keegan Murray fan i do think he's going to be a good player but i'm not like his biggest fan um and i do think that four would be a little high for him so i would actually go with shade and sharp like i did in my mock draft but keegan murray at four if you want to go with him sure um and it's a it's it's a it's a safe pick if you're the kings but i think the kings will need to you know find a gem like a shade and sharp who can be one of the best shot creators in this draft and who i think is can play really well alongside De'Aaron fox um i think Keegan Murray is, is kind of locked on that he might go number six because I think Detroit is taking either Sharp or Ivy, whoever whoever Sacramento does not take. And they have him taking Ivy. I had Ivy going to Detroit in my mock draft too. So, um, yeah, um, Jaden Ivy to Detroit, I think is a like a like a big W because I think Cade um, and him can really share the floor a lot better than him and Fox. Uh, you can have Cade play off the ball. You can have him play on the ball. Killian Hayes come off the bench, lead that second unit. You have your backcourt for the future set right there. I like Ivy to Detroit. I think that's that that, that should be locked in uh, for like a uh, a no brainer pick for the Pistons if he falls, um, which I think he will because I don't. The Kings might be dumb and take Ivy. Um, like I said, I'm not I'm not an Ivy hater. I, I don't hate Ivy. Ivy is one of my favorite players, but just don't like the fit with Sacramento. So. Um, yeah, they have the Pacers taking shade and sharp. I think these are like the consensus four, five, six. You know, whatever order, I don't I don't really know what order you take them in. Um, but those are the consensus four, five, six. And um all I had is Shade and Sharp and uh Keegan Murray flipped. Uh I think Keegan Murray fits Indiana as a low maintenance guy. Indiana is a low maintenance franchise. Uh not really a flashy team. They have a lot of guys who, who can play basketball for sure, but um you know they're not really uh, a team that has a lot of pizzazz and stuff like that they're just a low maintenance team so i like i like keegan murray with indiana um i do think he fits that team but shaden sharp is also a good pick they got to figure out what they do with brockton like it says right here so um yeah uh portland trailblazers they actually have them going with jalen duran um interesting interesting uh this means probably means that nurkic is is expendable um I wouldn't go with a center. You know, I know, I know a lot of people who would. I would probably go with the wing player, uh, like AJ Griffin or Ben Matherin. And I had AJ Griffin going in my draft, but um, Jalen Duran is really good. He's one of my favorite players. Um, I, I just don't like him in Portland because I don't know what you do with Nurkic. Uh, I think they they probably would keep Nurkic uh, because he's Dame's boy, and if Dame's staying, I think Nurkic will stay as well. So. Um, it says that Nurkic is entering unrestricted free agency this summer, but I do think that the Blazers will bring him back. Uh, but I, 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 I mean, depending off if Nurkic returns or not, Jalen Duran could be a good fit with the Blazers. I just don't know if Nurkic is returning. I would, I would much more rather go with the wing player who, who can play alongside Dame as a catch and shoot type guy, like a uh, AJ Griffin or a Ben Matherin. Um, at number eight, they have the Pelicans going with AJ Griffin good fit i had them going with matherin because i had aj griffin going number seven but i think that's it's still it's still a very good pick uh because aj griffin is a very good shooter and that's what the pelicans need as it says right here one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the nba and griffin is a 45 percent shooter so um no brainer of a pick to me uh san antonio spurs this is interesting dyson daniels now i don't like the fit with the spurs i'm gonna be honest with you uh Dejounte is there and i do think that although dyson can play the two a little bit there's some concerns with this outside shot to me. Um, and DeJounte, we all know, is not the best outside shooter. Uh, he, Dyson Daniels reminds me a lot of Lonzo Ball, you know, with this height. 
and his uh, playmaking and his defensive upside. Um, so I wouldn't want him to go to the Spurs. I, I, I think this is a bad pick for them, in my opinion. I would much rather, you know, I think for the Spurs, if Jalen Duran is available, you take him at nine because, you know, I, I, I just think that's a no-brainer of a pick to me. Or if you take, if you get like a, I would much rather prefer a Johnny Davis with the Spurs over a Dyson Daniels because Johnny Davis, who has not been taken yet on this mock draft by ESPN, I think can play off the ball a lot better. Um, and we'll get to Johnny Davis, but I don't know why he's not been taken yet. Um, at number 10, okay, we got Johnny Davis going at 10. Um, I had him going at 10 to my mock draft. I would probably, you know, um, I probably have Dyson Daniels going here now because he shot up a lot of draft boards due to his combine performance. And I do think that the news that came out today that Bradley Beal is looking to um, sign a multi-year extension worth up to $250 million, I do think that that changes a lot for me because I was in the, under the impression that Beal was going to leave and opt out of his player option. But um, if, if he returns, I just don't see the fit with him and Johnny Davis. So I would rather go with a true point guard like Dyson Daniels and have Johnny Davis go at nine to the Spurs or something. Um, if the Spurs, if, if Jalen Duran is gone. Um, but yeah, I would. I think the, the most nailed on pick for the Wizards should be Dyson Daniels if, if he is available. Uh, for the Knicks, they have him going with Benedict Matherin. Good pick for them. I, I really like this pick for them. I had him going at 8 to the Pelicans, but he fell to 11. It doesn't really make sense for the Wizards or the Spurs to take him. Um, so I guess that makes sense that he fell. Uh, but yeah, I would have just these two flipped for me because I think that Johnny Davis... I, I like Johnny Davis a lot. He reminds me a lot of Devin Booker with this pull-up game and stuff like that. So um, I'm high on him. I, I'm a lot higher than a lot of other people because he's been falling out of a lot of top 10s recently because of the hype of Dyson Daniels and these other guys. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have Johnny Davis at 9 and then Dyson Daniels at 10. That, that, that's what I would uh, flip with these uh, two picks. And then Ben Matherin at 11 is fine. I'm not too bad about that. Usman Dieng at 12. I'm a fan of Usman Dieng. This is exactly where I had him going in my mock draft. It, he seems like an OKC type guy, a project um, who who um, can develop and go to a team that has nothing but time to develop players and like OKC. Um, he's a point forward. Um, so I think this is a good fit for the OKC Thunder. I'm, I'm not too mad at this pick. Like I said, he was going 12 in my mock draft anyway. I mean, like it says right here, the Thunder can afford to be patient and take a swing on a high upside prospect like Dieng, which makes sense. 13, Charlotte Hornets, Mark Williams. This is probably the most, apart from the like the top three or something, this is probably the most nailed on, no-brainer pick in the draft. Like, if the Hornets screw this up, I have nothing more to say about the Hornets. Like, like I, it would be very... It'd be very disappointing if they do not take Mark Williams if he's available because and I don't see why he wouldn't be available. I don't think the Thunder, if they draft a big at number one or I mean, at number two, they're not taking a center. Um, I don't think the Knicks, the Knicks might take Jalen Duran if he's available, um, if he falls. But I don't think they're going to take Mark Williams that high and then same with anyone in the top 10. So he should be available at 11. I mean, at 13 and the Hornets just have to take him, man. It's just a no brainer. Um, you know, he's uh, he's he's very familiar with that area as it says right here he went to school at duke so um yeah this is a no-brainer to me mark williams at 13 uh 14 they have the cavaliers taking malachi brenham hometown kid I, I mean i'm not mad at this pick i had them going with ochai baji uh who i think is a much better off the ball player for them but malachi brenham i'm not mad at at all he's a guy that can take up the pressure off of darius garland at times i just thought that they have some guys who can do that already as shot creators like Karis Levert and Colin Sexton. Um, I guess they're saying that Colin Sexton might be available um, as a trade piece. So you might need another guy to fill that void. But I, I would much rather have a excellent catch and shoot prospect uh, and 3 and D prospect like Ochai Agbaji going to a playoff pushing Cleveland. Um, and Ochai Agbaji is a veteran. He's a senior. He's a four year player. He knows his role. He's not going to do too much. That's why I would have him go 14. But I'm not mad at Malachi Branham at all. Hornets at 15 again. Um, they have Ochai Baji going to 15. There's one name that has fallen that I have not seen, and I'm very surprised um, as to how this guy is not in the top 15. Um, but maybe he might be 16. We'll see. Ochai Baji at 15 to the Hornets is, is, is a very good fit. I had him going at 14, but him him at 15 I think is really nice. Um, you know, another guy who can, like I said, a 3 and D prospect who can be a catch and shoot player next to Lamelo ball and that you know fast-paced hornet system reminds me a lot of desmond bain i think that's my comparison to him he's my he's my, he's a desmond bain of this draft I've, I've said it for a long time now i do think that this is a good fit for him 
Um, and I do think he's one of the most NBA ready prospects in my opinion. Uh, number 16, we have Ty Ty Washington going to the Hawks. This is my first pick that I don't like. I don't know why you would take Ty Ty. You have kind of a, uh, a, a crowded guard rotation in Trey Young, Kevin Herter, Bogdanovich, DeLon Wright. You still you drafted Sharif Cooper last year. Um, like I'm, I'm not too excited about Ty Ty in Atlanta. Unless you, you if, if you want to use your 16th overall pick on a guy who you know is going to be a backup point guard from day one and probably until his end of end of his Hawks career because Trey Young's that guy at that point guard position, then go ahead. But I would much rather prefer them to them for uh, for them to take a guy who can you know tra- take the pressure off of Trey Young at times and just be a guy who can help them uh, from day one. Uh, I do like Ty Ty, which is why I don't want him to go to the Hawks. Um, I had them going with uh, Malachi Brandon, but he's gone. Uh, Ochai Bati has gone. So I guess they just went with Ty Ty Washington. They're saying that uh, finding a guard who can both run the team when Trey Young is taking a breather and also play alongside him. I guess they're saying you can play the two alongside Trey Young, which is fine. I mean, uh, yeah, he could play the two, but then you would have to have yeah, DeAndre Hunter at the four, Kevin Herter at the three. Defensively, that sounds terrible. So. I wouldn't like this with Atlanta. This is like one of the picks that I'm I'm not happy with from, from ESPN. Um, Tari Eason at 17. Wow, this one guy that I've been looking for has been falling over and over. I, I, they're disrespecting my boy, man. I don't know how he's not taken, but Tari Eason at 17. This is exactly where I had Ty Ty Washington going. I think Houston is a perfect fit for Ty Ty because he's a pure point guard. Um, I think the Rockets need a pure point guard. I, I, don't, I don't like the Kevin Porter Jr. at point guard experiment. I don't think that's going to work long term. Uh, they need a true facilitator, and Tata is that guy. We've seen Kentucky guys being held back because they had to sacrifice to help their team win. Tyrese Maxey, Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, Jamal Murray. We can go on and on to list these guys that have, um, you know, they've not done as much at Kentucky as they could have because they, you know, they had to play a role and fill a role on a stacked team. And Tata is one of those guys. I do think that playmaking is one of his biggest strengths, though, which is why I would want him to go to Houston. At 18. Finally, my guy gets taken. Jeremy Sohan at 18 is a steal for the Bulls. Like this is a big time steal. You know, take take Jeremy Sohan at 18. You know, you you guys win the draft with Sohan at 18. This is a guy that I think could potentially go back in the top 10 if if if, if a team wants him that high, or you know, early, um, like back end of the lottery is what I think Jeremy Sohan will go. At 18 is a big time steal, man. Like. The Chicago Bulls, like they they win the draft with this, they they really really do in my opinion. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Sohan's. Um, I do think that he's uh, he's gonna be a very good player. Um, he's a, he's a he's a point forward. Reminds me a lot of like Draymond Green type, but he can stretch the floor a little bit as well. Cuts. He he's he's a very high IQ player, Jeremy Sohan, and I think that's what the Bulls need. So this is a W for the Bulls. Uh, Timberwolves at 19, they got him taking Nikola Jovic, another pick that I don't really like. Um, because I think the Timberwolves need defensive upside. I mean, they don't really have a lot of, you know, really good defenders apart from Pat Bev. I would much rather, you know, I had him taking Tari Eason at 19, but if, if he's not available, I would much rather they go EJ Liddell. Um, Cause I do think that he provides that. He's that Swiss army knife forward that you could use alongside Cat. But Nikola Jovic, I'm not a huge fan of it in, in Minnesota. I would much rather him go to a team like San Antonio or Dallas. Um, they have San Antonio going Kennedy Chandler. Kennedy Chandler actually reminds me a lot of DeJounte Murray in a, in a, in a way. Um, he's undersized, but he plays a lot bigger than what he is. Uh, defensively, you know, he, he, he shows a lot of flashes in my opinion. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge... Like, I think that his defense is very underrated because of his size. But like it says right here, he led the SEC in steals. Um, and... Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of his. I just don't know if you want if you want the Spurs to take him because he cannot play the two. Dejounte cannot play the two. I would much rather you go with the Ichi Liddell or um, someone like that if you if you need to. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, Denver Nuggets, Marjan Bochamp. I'm a huge fan of this fit. I'm a, I really like Marjan Bochamp. I think I had him going at 21 to the Nuggets. Um, yeah, Marjan Bochamp is, is is really really good. He's a defensive beast and he, and he can he's a very uh, athletic player as well. His, his shot is the only question mark, but he can do a lot of dirty work. Like I said, for a team like here, uh, the Nuggets who are trying to contend, he can do a lot of dirty work and uh, be a low maintenance player for them down the line. Uh, Memphis Grizzlies, Blake Wesley, good pick, really good pick actually. Um, Three and D player type of guy. 
Uh, he can he can score. He can create off the dribble a little bit. He can defend. Um, nice player. Nice, really nice player for the Grizzlies. Uh, 23, the Brooklyn Nets. Walker Kessler is interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I think the Nets are going to start. I think the Nets should start Nick Claxton. I actually don't mind Walker Kessler. I didn't really think about them taking a center in my mock draft, but to be honest, when I'm thinking about it even more, like Andre Drummond is kind of getting old. LaMarcus Aldridge just passed it. Same with, you know, whoever else they have apart from Nick Claxton. So I guess Walker Kessler couldn't be a, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a bad option. Um, but I would like EJ Liddell is still on the board here. I would, I would much rather them go with EJ Liddell. Um, than Walker Kessler. They have EJ Liddell going 24 to the Bucks. I think this is a steal for the Bucks. The Bucks, you know, they'll be very happy with EJ Liddell at 24. Um, and uh, they are in win now mode, as it says right here. He can be a solid Swiss Army knife for, um, you know, if you want to back him up, if you want to back up Giannis, he's a guy that can do that. 25, Kendall Brown to the, to the Spurs. Um, Kendall Brown to the Spurs is solid. You know, it's not bad. I'm, I'm not a... I'm not a I'm not opposed to this. He's very raw. He's he's a very raw prospect. But I think if any team can develop a guy like this, it's the Spurs. I'm not a huge Kendall Brown fan. I prefer Sohan from the from from that from that Baylor squad. But I do think that with the right development, which is what the Spurs have, he could turn into a good rotational piece. The Mavericks, Jaden Hardy. Why? Like <laughs> why do you need Jaden Hardy? You have so much offense already with Luka Doncic. Um, I guess they're talking about Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie might leaving or stuff like that, but nah, bro. If I'm the Mavericks, I'm getting more wing depth as far as three and D type guys. Jalen Jaden Hardy's not really a defender. He's more of a Cam Thomas, Jordan Clarkson. Like he's just a bucket getter. That's what he is. And I don't think the Mavericks need another guy when they have Luca. I guess they would need a guy to take pressure off of Luca, but I, I think that's the last of their problems. I think defense is their biggest need. And I do think that a team like, you know, the Mavericks could use a big, like a Christian Coloco if he's available, um, a 3 and D wing if he's available. But yeah, Jaden Hardy, I guess, cool pick, but I, I, I think there's a lot of other guys you could go with at 26. Um, Miami Heat, Trevor Kills. This is a little bit of a reach for me. The Heat are my team, obviously, but Trevor Kills is a Heat type player, man. He's, he's, a, he's a guy that the Heat would love because of his toughness and defense and um, unselfishness, unselfishness. I don't know why I just pronounced that word terribly, uh, but Trevor Keels is a Heat type player for sure. Uh, I just don't know if the Heat are going to take him at 27. Um, but yeah, I have nothing but positive stuff to say about Trevor Keels. He's a he's a very good prospect in my opinion, um, and he is one of the youngest pro prospects in the draft as well. Reminds me a lot of Marcus Smart. Uh, 28 Christian Brown, good pick for the uh, Golden State Warriors. Very good pick for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, Swiss Army Knife, plug and play type wing player, like it says right here. Um, yeah, good pick for the Warriors. Memphis Grizzlies, Bryce McGowan's at 29. Steal, in my opinion. I think he's going to go a lot higher than 29 in the actual draft. Um, they, the, the Memphis Grizzlies are going to have a, a quite a few picks here. I think they're going to have uh, two back end, and they have a very deep team already, so they might want to trade out of one of these picks, but we'll see. I'm the Thunder who have three picks. Caleb Houston, this is exactly where I had him going. I had him going at, at 30 to the Thunder. Um, good pick for them. He's, he's a guy. No, actually, I had Patrick Baldwin Jr. I messed up. I, I didn't have Caleb Houston. Caleb Houston at 30 is kind of high, bro. Like Patrick Baldwin Jr. not in the first round is very, very intriguing to me. Um, I don't know if I would take Caleb Houston this high. I would, I would take Patrick Baldwin Jr. over Caleb Houston if I'm OKC. Um, some guys that fell, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that my guy did not go. I mean, he just started generating some buzz. PBJ goes 31. David Roddy, where is my guy? Where is my guy? Ismail Kamagate is one of my guys. He's, he's very underrated. Um, wow, I cannot even find my guy. Christian Coloco, Justin Lewis, Jalen Williams, bro. Jalen Williams, this guy right here, I'm highlighting him so you guys can see. He is going to be the biggest deal of the draft. I don't know who's going to select him where. I don't know if he's going to go first round, second round. He's been a riser at the combine, but I've watched this guy all season. He is a stud. He he, he reminds me a lot of Paul Pierce um, and Joe Johnson because they play at their own pace. He's not like a fast paced player, but the thing about him is that nothing can really speed him up. He can score at all three levels. He can defend this guy right here. If he goes to the Clippers at 43, bro, the seal of the draft for sure like not even close he is a bona fide first round type prospect 
um and i think he's gonna be a stud so jalen williams like i would i would i would consider him going to the first round if i'm the mavericks if you want it if you're the mavericks and you have to pick between Jaden hardy and jalen williams um per, uh, specifically for the defensive purposes i would go with jalen williams over Jaden hardy that's how high i value this guy and i love Jaden hardy he's one of my favorite prospects with, because of his scoring but jalen williams is different man i think he's going to be a stud um some more uh, steals right here G gene montero at 44 i think is a steal um jd davison is has dropped man he's he's been he was a guy that went very high but he dropped uh travion williams i like um Ga Ga gabriel Procida, i really like um international player from italy alondes williams uh peyton watson harrison ingram was a guy who generated first round buzz earlier um obviously there's only 58 picks because of the heat and the uh bulls forfeiting their picks because of uh tampering issues uh christian coloco i was talking about him jake laravia could go first round Dalen Terry has been rising. Um, uh, Wendell Moore, Ismail Kamagate, Terquavion Smith. These these like four right here, or these three like in particular, could go first round because they've been generating a lot of buzz. PBJ, David Roddy, and Terquavion Smith. But um, yeah, man, that's basically we're gonna wrap up the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know who you want your favorite team to select. Um, I'm very interested. I'm I'm super happy that the it's, it's almost draft season because draft season is my favorite part of the, the nba I, I love college basketball and the nba draft so yeah we're gonna wrap up the video here make sure you guys drop a like subscribe comment down below i'll see you later as always Peace.